I am the customer success manager for Morningstar Investment Research Center, which is our database for libraries, both public, academic, and corporate. If you're not familiar with Morningstar, um, we started in Chicago. We're a Chicago-based company. Now we're global. And uh, we started, the company was started by Joe Mansueto, our founder. Uh, he was about 27 years old. He was a stock analyst and he realized that, um, well, he thought it was unfair that individual investors didn't have access to the same information that financial professionals had. So he started Morningstar and um, provided investment research to everyone. And um, now we're in 29 countries, so it's really grown. Um, we have over 8,500 employees and um, our mission has stayed the same, which is to empower investor success. Um, we empower investors all over the world and we're continuing to look for ways to help people achieve their financial security. So as I mentioned, Morningstar Investment Research Center is just a part of uh, the company and it is a database for libraries. It is a live database. So everything that you see is live. Uh, there is about a 15 minute lag time for some of the data. Um, just keep that in mind, but it is live. And the database is also a cater to both uh, new investors and also seasoned investors. So no matter where you are in your investing journey, you can use Morningstar for different purposes. Um, you can find things on the database like news commentary, in-depth analyst research, um, data on funds, stocks, and ETFs. And in addition to the data and research, we also focus heavily on investor education. This is a big focus of the database because we are catering to libraries. You can find a lot of educational materials. We have things like our self-study investing classroom, as well as a wide range of articles and videos on many different topics. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I will try to keep this uh, training pretty high level because there is a lot of data, but hopefully you can take away um, something from the training. As Barb mentioned, feel free to put your questions in the chat and then I will answer them at the end. Um, I'm going ahead going to go ahead and uh, stop my video so that I can have you guys focus on the database and then I'll turn it back on for the questions. All right, so this is what you're going to see when you log into the database. Uh, we have our home screen, which is a way to quickly get to some of our most used tools, such as our screener tools. So you can just click on those from here. You can also click on some of our planning and education tools like the Invest in Classroom or the Portfolio X-Ray. You can also go within these tabs to find this content as well. But again, these are just quick ways to get there. We have to, at the top right uh, corner, we have our search box. This is where you can search for any security by name or ticker symbol. Keep in mind, it is not a keyword search. So you can just type in um, the ticker symbol and then you go straight to the quote page. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in Apple. A list will come up and you can see we also have Canadian data, so just keep Keep that in mind and make sure you're choosing the right investment you're interested in. So we'll choose the USA. And once we click on that, we're going to get to our stock quote page for Apple. Um, we have about 120 equity analysts. Um, so they're going to be a big factor in this um, quote page. But I'm going to show you some of the key highlights of the quote page, there is a lot of data within here. So you don't necessarily need to use it all, but 
you can get a sense of what kind of information you'll find in here. Um, so as I mentioned, we do have about 120 equity analysts, and those are going to be the analysts are the ones who are going to give the ratings. So one of the reasons that people use Morningstar and rely on Morningstar is our ratings. We have a methodology behind our ratings and it's just a way at a glance to get an idea of whether our analysts think a stock is undervalued or overvalued. Um, in this case with Apple, a three-star stock is a fair return. Um, and you'll also see the ticker name here. And then this pricing is the last price. So this was done November 9th, which was um, at the last close date. Um, but you can also find, and this was recently changed. So if you're familiar with the database, uh, this might look slightly different. Where you can get the chart is by clicking on this uh, figure right here, chart. And that's going to pull up the interactive chart where you can view uh, how the stock traded for the day as well as the frequency. That's what it automatically um, goes to, but you can also change this. So if you're looking for historical data, you can go ahead and click 10 year or max and then get that data. You can also, so if you kind of scroll over this, you'll see how it the pricing is. But if you want to look at a, a spreadsheet of the price, you can actually export that into Excel and look at the pricing that way. You can also add a comparison. So if you wanted to add Microsoft or Google, you could add those in and then compare. You can also choose things like events and indicators and um, change these tabs to anything you might be interested in viewing. Also things like fundamentals that you might be interested in. These are things that you can also add. Um, drawings as well as the display. So this is all customizable to how you'd like to view it. Uh, you can also print it here. So that's where that chart is. Um, so just keep in mind, because sometimes people will look at this and say, that's not the current price. It's the last price of what it was traded at. So actually, I believe it would be today when the market closed. That would be this price. And then here would be for the day. So in order to navigate the this page, this quote page, you can either scroll down using this um, tab over here, or you can click on this hamburger menu and jump to any section you're interested in. We also have the company report here. So this is going to give you basically all this information that you see in a quote page, you can get within a PDF. So if you wanted to print it or look at it in a PDF format, that would be one way to get it. Um, so some of the things you'll get here, so you've got overview, key ratios, trading information and news. And these are all things, all these news you can click on. And next we're gonna have the analysis. So one thing I want to point out is this I right here, and this is going to be um, information. So we, as I mentioned, our analysts have their own methodology for how we give our ratings. So to learn a little bit more about that methodology, you could click on that I and get some information on it. You can also click on things like five star price with that would, or excuse me, five-star five price would be considered buying, one-star price would be considered selling, economic moat. So if you're unfamiliar with some of these terminology, I would suggest looking at that I to learn a little bit more about it. You can also look at who the competitors are by clicking on competitors. And you can at a glance see the comparison between the competitors. There's three that they compare the stock to. Also on the summary, so this is the current analysis and you can click on any of these to jump to the section. 
Um, you can see that this is updated October 27th. Usually these updates are made when there's something that happens in the news or for example, there's fourth quarter results. So then they will make a note on that. Um, so that's where those reports come into play. And then uh, we can close that. And then you can also get access to the report archives. So if you're interested in the, um, there we go. If you're interested in learning more about this particular stock and you want to kind of dig a little bit deeper and read some of the analyst notes, that's where you would click. You can see there's 98. You can also see that the author is consistently the same with a few exceptions. And that's because with our analysts, they have a set number of investments that they focus on and they really spend time pouring over the data, the research, all the news that comes out, all the things that as an individual investor, you probably either don't have access to or you're not, you don't have the time to necessarily pour over that. So that's a real reason why uh, people depend on Morningstar is because we've got these analysts that are doing that work for you and you can trust that this is um, facts that you, proprietary data that you would, you could look at and see if this is a good investment for you. Okay, other things you can find on the quote page. So things like price versus fair value, it's a 10 year chart um, and you can go over this to see the pricing. Sustainability. So this is really a have been, has been a huge focus for Morningstar the last several years um, as investors become more interested in a company's impact on ESG, which stands for environmental social governance. We have even created our own rating, and this is our ESG risk rating assessment. Again, click on the I to learn a little bit more. So the data comes from Sustainalytics. Um, and Sustainalytics is actually a company that Morningstar acquired several years ago because, again, we just believe um, that sustainability and choosing those investments based on sustainability is going to be a big part of the future of investors. Um, so investors are not only just looking at how a stock is performing or the price versus fair value, they're also looking at things like how it affects the environment, social and governance. And so we have this whole section here that we've dedicated to that. Um, so that's what you'll find there. And there's also a video. So if you want to learn more about that, I'm also going to point out throughout the training different areas where we have content on sustainability. So if it is of interest to you, I can show you where you'll find that information. Okay, and then we also have things like um, trailing returns, um, key statistics, uh, things like financial health, growth, you can get all that there. Um, financial statements, so you can find income statements, balance sheet, cash flow. And you can always click here to get more details. You can also export data in a lot of places. Dividends and splits. Ownership, so you can see where um, the major shareholders, uh, which funds hold that stock. So if you're interested in purchasing a fund that held Apple, for example, you could go to Apple and then you could scroll down to ownership and you could see what um, funds own Apple. You can click on major, but you can also look here for more ownership data. Um, you can also look at concentrated buying, selling. And then we also have executive team. So you can click on an executive's name to view their bio. You can also see things like their compensation, um, their transaction history with the company stock. You can also click here for board of directors. So there's a lot of data here. Um, and then in addition to 
that we also at the bottom, you'll find the company profile. So this just gives the business's description. You also have things like contact details, um, what sector it's in, what industry. So really there's a lot of data within this quote page. And some of it you might not ever look at and some of it um, could be useful. Definitely looking at the analysis is going to be a place that most people start. Okay, so we just, as a reminder, we just put in the stock name and then pulled up this quote page. We're under equity, and I'll show you these different tabs and what's included underneath each one. So overview, this is where you're going to access the latest um, in-depth stock analyst reports. Sometimes it takes a moment to pull up. Okay, so here we go. So latest analyst reports, um, the market fair value. So this is at one month. You can also customize this by clicking on those. Market commentary. Um, and this is going to be all current. You know, you could see that a lot of it was today. Um, gainers, losers. So at a glance, if you want to see who the gainers, losers were for today. Investing ideas. Um, and then markets. So this is where we're going to highlight the daily market movements. And these are all real-time trackers. So you'll find things like the sector delta market barometer indices. Um, and then another thing that you might come to this section for is commodity future. If you're interested in that, you'll see some overlap with some of these uh, tabs like market commentary and gainers, losers. Okay, and then under research, this is where um, you're gonna get things like some of our reports. Well, wait till it pulls up. Okay, so latest analyst reports. There's also a section here on morning notes. Um, so some of the things that are happening in the market that you might be interested in learning more about. These are all articles. Um, Again, some of the other investing ideas is repeated. Some of the newer things that you might want to take a look at is research highlights. So this is going to be a weekly um, summary of stock ideas and developments in the companies we cover. So again, weekly, the market outlook is quarterly. And this is what you would expect in a quarter. And then at the bottom, you'll see our sector reports. Um, so these are also published quarterly, and you can download these in a PDF. We also have a section here on our research methodology. So if you want to learn more about that stock rating, you could click on here to get a PDF on that. Okay, and then moving on to latest analyst reports. So um, as I mentioned, we have about 120 equity analysts, and Morningstar has one of the largest independent equity research teams in the world, um, and we cover about 1,000 equities. So we have in-depth analyst coverage on 1,000 equities, and this is the list of every stock that we cover. They are listed right now by date. So the most recent is gonna be listed there. You can either click on here to get the quote page or if you just want the analyst report, you can click on the PDF and get that. Um, you can also filter. So right now it's on analyst report date, but you could filter by the star rating. So if you wanted to pull up five star, stocks, you could filter that way and then um, pull those up. You can also search. So if you're curious, if we cover, um, if we had an analyst report on a particular stock, you could put the name in and then you could see, yes, we do have, we do cover Apple. Um, okay. And then portfolios. So we have one of six portfolio pick lists that you can review. So you can review one of these. Um, so for example, right now we're on large cap US core pick list and it's just a list of 
a portfolio, a model portfolio that we've created, our analysts have created, um, that falls under this category. And we just believe that it gives investors the best um, risk adjusted return prospects. Uh, you can also download this in PDF. Um, you can't click on here to get to the quote page. So you would have to, if you looked at the ticker, you could just put it in here and then pull that up. Okay, and then moving on to ratings and performance. Um, so this is where you could start to filter for your own personal uh, views that you wanted to look for. So if, for example, you wanted a four-star rated stock and you wanted it to have a wide moat, and you can see the, the results are, um, you know, filtering down. Okay, now we have eight. And then you can click here to get to the quote page. So this is just a way to filter. There's also here um, Morningstar rating changes. So new five-star stocks, new one-star stocks. But I also would recommend the screener. This is going to be a place where you're able to really kind of hone in on what you're interested in. It allows you to filter and then also narrow down any stock investments based on your own personal criteria. So you can select from a range of performance metrics or Morningstar proprietary ratings for your screen. You can choose as many or you know just one. Um, so for example, say we wanted technology and um, we wanted the ESG risk rating to be three globes or more and we wanted four stars or more. Let's see if anything comes up, 55. Okay, so, and you can always change this or adjust it any way you want. So here's the list that fall under that category or all those, the way that you filtered it. Um, you can change these to view. So in that, in this first one, it was the analyst research. So you can see the ratings. Um, but you can also click on things like overview to see the industry, the equity style box, the business country, growth, market, profitability, and valuation. And one thing that some people ask about is a one-page report for stocks. So if you remember when we were on the quote page for stocks, there was the company report, which is going to be an, a longer in-depth uh, review of that particular stock. Now, if you just wanted a one-page report, this is where you would be able to find it. So it's called the IDR or Investment Detail Report, and it's going to be a PDF, and I will pull it up so you can see what it looks like. So that's going to be the two and three pages are just disclosures, but it just gives you at a glance data and some of the key uh, statistics on that stock. Um, if you wanted just the one page report and you knew the name, you could just put in the name of the stock and then scroll down. Oh, one thing you have to keep in mind is that we have already selected. So just make sure all your um, filters are clear or reset filters. I guess I could have done that. Would have been easier. Okay, so now I'm going to put back in Apple. And then I scroll down and then this is where I'd be able to get that one page report. So that's one way to find it. Um, but hopefully in the future, we can add that one page report back to the quote page so that it's not as um, difficult to find. Okay, so that was a screener. And then archive is just a place where you would be able to search for maybe a article that had come up or by date. Um, these are the analyst research articles, but you can also click on things like market commentary or morning notes um, and then find what you're interested in. 
Okay, so once you're familiar with equity, funds is going to have a very similar look and feel, but there are some differences, which I will point out. Um, so we also have an overview tab where you can view the latest analyst reports, sector delta, market barometer, and market indices. Um, we have different ratings for funds. We have a star rating, um, which is looking at past performance, but we also have uh, what we call, well, it's our analyst rating, but we call it the medalist rating as well. And it's a forward looking projection. So you'll see that there. Um, and then mutual funds, this is where you're going to get our analyst reports. And so we have about 1600 mutual funds that have in-depth analyst coverage. And again, you can sort this list or you can search. So I had someone the other day ask me, well, I just um, look at Vanguard funds. How could I find the analyst reports on them? Well, you could just put in here Vanguard um, and then it will pull up the list and you, you would be able to click on there to get to the quote page, which I'll show you. So similarly to the quote fund, or the, excuse me, the stock quote page, the fund quote page um, has a very similar look where you can scroll to whatever section you want or jump ahead by clicking there. We do have additional reports here. So we do have the one page report listed as well as the fund report. Also, we cover um, a sustainability report and a carbon report. We have our analysis here. Um, so again, in-depth analyst research with the analyst rating. So again, the medalist rating or analyst rating, we look at three key pillars, process, people, and parent. Um, if you wanna learn more about what that means, you can click on the I. And this is how our analysts make their decision on or come up with their decision on how the rating, what rating this fund gets is based on these pillars. Um, so you can read a little bit more about that there. We also have things like ESG commitment level and then the ratings you can see um, for 2022, as well as three year, five year and 10 year. And again, you can read the full analysis here or the report archive. Okay, so performance, this is gonna be a 10-year um, performance. Um, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is there's also a chart here. So similarly to the stock chart, you can also pull up this interactive chart um, and it's gonna have the same functionality as far as choosing the date range and adding comparisons and events and indicators and you can export it all that's going to be consistent as well um, but you can also see the performance here for 10 years and um, trailing returns and then we also have our sustainability rating as well as um, so you can also look here for carbon metrics. So risk, you can view the data um, of the risk of owning this mutual fund. And again, you've got the information if you want to learn more about it. Um, hopefully this helps for anyone that's new to investing to look at these little eyes to understand it a little bit further. Um, price, portfolio. So this breaks out the portfolio's asset allocation and things like exposure, what sectors it's in, the bond breakdown, um, holdings, bond versus others. So the people, that's going to be the fund manager. You can see 
um, you can click on the name of the fund manager and view their bio, tenure information, and other funds they might manage. Their strategy. Parent is going to view or provide an overview of the fund family. So Vanguard, and you can see things like um, their total net assets. And this is also going to be a 10 year. And then rating breakdowns by the analyst rating and Morningstar rating. And then CrowdSense and historical data. So that is the quote page. And then moving back to these tabs, um, target date series. So these are a list of fun families where you can download printable PDFs of in-depth target date fun series. 529 college savings. So this was just recently updated. So it's done once a year in October or early November, late October, early November. And you can look by state. So um, Illinois, you see we have our two 529 plans and you can see what the rating is. You can download the um, analyst report here. You can also click here to get our rating methodology as well as the uh, landscape report. Um, sustainability. So we have a whole section on sustainability under funds, and this just provides access to expert views and research on ESG news in the marketplace. You can also read more about our methodology here. So again, this is a big focus for Morningstar, so we continue to add content there. Um, the fund screener. So again, this just allows you to filter and narrow down your fund investments based on your own personal criteria. Um, it's very similar to the stock screener. It can be as simple as choosing your fund family. Um, like Vanguard. You can choose more than one, you'll see here, or you can take it out by clicking that. Um, you could choose your star rating. You could choose your analyst rating. Okay, so these are some of the other things you can choose. Um, okay, I don't know if that will, I was gonna say, I'm not sure that will, that might take it away. Um, let's get the list down a little bit. Okay, so now we have 70 that fall under that category. Similarly, you can click on these to see different um, data points. There's also the IDR, the one page report, as well as the fun report. One thing that's gonna be different in the fun screener is these two things right here. So one is you can export it, um, you can also, compare. So if you wanted to compare these four funds, you could click. So just click on those, click on the little circle, and then click on Morningstar Fund Compare. And you can see a list of um, the data points and how they compare. So that's quite useful if you're looking to 
choose a fund and you have a list, but you're not really sure what which one would be the best fit for you, that's just a way to get it at a glance. You can also generate a PDF. You can remove any of these. You can add a holding there. So it's completely customizable. Okay, and then we also have this fun compare here, but I would recommend using this because with this fun compare, you can only do two, you can only compare two. So it's um, not as useful. So I would suggest just sticking with the screener. Um, you could also use this tool find similar. So for example, if you, um, were interested in this fund or you have this fund in your portfolio and you wanted something similar, you could put in the name or the ticker and then get a list of similar funds. There's 627, so you could um, you know, pick which ones you're interested in. You can also change these or add additional filters like show low risk funds. You can see, I don't think this one works for it. Um, okay, so 165. You'll see here, so it says can't filter. So that's why I didn't click on it, but I think it's gonna take me back to the, the page. So we'll just go ahead and try again. Okay, so then once you're here, you can choose your um, top five, your short list, and then you could look at things like um, the performance, fees, portfolio, risk. So again, that would be the find similar. There's also an archive, which you can check um, based on dates. Okay, and then moving on to ETFs. Um, so ETFs are exchange traded funds. We do cover ETFs and we do have analyst reports on them, which you'll see here, the latest ones. You can see the market fair value commentary. So just as the markets tab under equity, we highlight the daily market movements and as well as funds as well. So sector delta, market barometer, market indices, the commentary, commodity future, you can see all that data there. Research is gonna provide the latest, um, again, market commentary. You could see our research methodology for ETFs here. Um, sector reports. A lot of this is going to be overlapped with what we saw in funds, so just keep that in mind. Okay, favorites. So this is going to be a selective list of 35 ETFs and their performance holdings and other relevant data. So um, you can scroll here and then you can click on the ETF that you're interested in and you get the quote page. And this is what the quote page will look like. So it's very similar to the fun quote page where you have an ETF report, sustainability report and carbon report. You can get the chart here, the interactive chart. You can also download and get a quick print of this page. You can see our analyst reports, performance for 10 year. So similarly, very similar to the fund quote page, it's gonna have similar content, but it would be for the ETF. And just a reminder, if there's a specific ETF you're interested in, you could just put the name in here and then pull up the quote page. There is also a screener for ETFs. And again, you're just putting in your um, personal criteria. Apparently there's no 
three star. Okay. Commodities for all ratings. Okay. Maybe that wasn't the best choice, but you get the idea. It's, it's a very similar, um, you know, functionality where you can do the IDR. There is also a comparison. So you could compare your ETFs. You just a reminder, you can also put the name in here. So if there's, um, So for example, um, if I wanted to look at these two, I knew the names, I just put a comma and then put the ticker and then you can click on that and then do the comparison. You can take whatever you didn't want out. Um, Okay, great. So that's the ETF. Um, so that's really a big part of the database is data and research. But then another big part of the database is education. And so I'm going to focus on that next. Um, you can click on this planning and education to get some of our tools. And this is going to be the overview, but you can also click here to get to different things. So one thing we're really excited about is the investing classroom. This is a self, it, it provides self-study courses with different modules. So we have modules such as um, like stocks and funds, portfolios, retirement. We also just recently added, and I don't know why governance got cut off, but that's ESG. So if you wanted to learn more about ESG, that could be a cool place to go. Um, so I'll just click on one of these to give you a sense of what you can find in here. So you can also change the topic here. And then level, this is where you're going to put your level 100 being you're a beginner, 500 more advanced. So you can see here for 100, it's going to be things like introduction to retirement planning. Um, so see, these are some of the topics. If you click here, I'll just show you an example of what this looks like. So this is going to tell you what you will learn. You can also take a quiz to just see how much you know. Um, and then start now, you'll see this is what you're going to find within it. So there's just, it just gives you a sense of, um, you know, it's just a learning experience and learning more about investing. And again, this is the most basic, but if you are more advanced, there are courses for someone who is, who does know more about investing. Um, okay, and then portfolio x-ray. So this is where you can use this tool to um, give you both qualitative and quantitative data on either your own personal portfolio or a potential portfolio you're thinking of creating. And I'll show you how to use this tool. So you're gonna click on view holdings and benchmark. You can choose your benchmark. All right, there we go. Benchmark I like to use is this one, market. U.S. market TR. Okay, and then you can choose if you want amount, weight units, you can put in if you have cash, you can put in your list of investments. This can be um, all funds or it can be a mix of funds and stocks and ETFs. If you have more than 10, you can just add them here. Um, so I'm just going to show you an example of um, so once you put in the ticker or the name, then just make sure you click on it. Um, what else? Let's see. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna equal 100. Um, 
Okay, and then you'll see the data here, but you can generate a report, which is a lot easier to review. Um, you can check whatever you want to focus on. I'm just going to show you all of it. So this is going to be the snapshot of your portfolio. You can see your value, your benchmark. You can see how it's allocated, um, the different sectors it falls under, the performance. You can see your top holdings. That's just the disclosure. And then we have the stock intersection. So you can see, uh, for example, you hold um, these three investments and they all have Microsoft. Um, or these three ha all have Amazon um, or Google. So if there's, um, if you want to diversify more, that could be an interesting place to look. Um, or if you want to diversify your sector, you can see all that data there. So that's going to be the stock intersection. And then it also would include the one page or IDR for each investment. So Dodge and Cox, Fidelity Magellan, Coca-Cola, United Airlines, and then Invesco Trust. And then you just have the disclosure. So it's, it's a really nice um, tool to use if you want to just review your portfolio or like I said, if you're thinking of doing something, you just wanna see if it would be a good portfolio, you could do that here. So that's the x-ray. And then we also have these calculators, which um, we are possibly going to retire. So I don't want to spend too much time on them. But um, essentially, they're just an interesting tool to kind of see where you're at with your goals for retirement, retirement or college. Okay, and then I'm going to quickly move on because I'm looking at the time and we've got articles and videos. So this is a great section to be able to review some of our um, articles and videos on um, a range of topics. And they're written by our Morningstar analysts and our investing specialists. And you can filter by collections. So for example, if you were interested in sustainability, you could click here and get the list of sustainability matters. You could see them by date. Um, so there's all different topics. Investing specialists is a good one. So um, you'll see here, Christine Benz, his name comes up a lot. And she is our director of personal finance. So you could also filter by her name. And you can see she has a lot of great articles. She's actually um, has quite a big fan base. She She's written a book for Morningstar. She just does a lot of great um, content on topics that are relevant. Uh, she recently did our uh, portfolio makeover week, which I'm, I see this, but I'm trying to see where it is. It's in here somewhere. Oh, here we go. Okay, Morningstar's 22, 2022 Portfolio Makeover Week. So you can go here and what she does is she takes readers or Morningstar users portfolios, they submit them and she makes them over. So it's kind of interesting and you can read the article here by just clicking on here. Um, but it gives some background on who they are and, um, you know, if they're near retirement or not. So it's just kind of interesting. That's something that she does. But she has a range of different topics that could be useful, like things like best way to save for college. So just a really great um, tool to make sure that you look for is this articles and videos. You can also filter by date. And then help, this is where you can, uh, we do database trainings. 
So every month I do a training. So if you ever wanted to review what we cover today, you could always join in. We also have our user guide, how to read a stock analyst report, how to read fund analyst report, our methodologies on our different ratings are going to be listed there. We also have some videos and then um, the glossary. So if you're looking at a term in the database and you're not sure what it means, you can use the glossary to find out more about that uh, term. And then newsletters. So our newsletters are monthly publications and we cover four different newsletters, stock investor, dividend investor, ETF investor, and fund investor. You've got the current issue as well as the last year of issues. And some of the features you can see here, there's commentary on current events such as ESG investing. There's also, um, I think in the stock investor, there's model portfolios, there's watch lists. So it's just a really great uh, complement to the database and a way to kind of dive in a little bit deeper and it's got a nice layout and easy to read. So that's the newsletter section. And then the last thing before I get to the questions is I just wanna point out, we do have a contact us uh, section here where we have an email and then a phone number. If you ever have any questions or you're having trouble accessing or something's not populating, or you just wanna understand something a little bit more, you can always reach out to us here at that library services at morningstar.com. Wonderful, okay, I'm gonna look at the chat and see what the questions are. Um, feel free to sign off if you um, don't wanna listen to the questions, but hopefully you'll stay around and uh, listen to what uh, your other participants are interested in learning. Okay, so let me start my video so I can look at you guys again. Um, okay, so economic moat. Okay, so somebody's asking, when you're looking at Apple, I noticed the term economic moat, what does that mean? So that's one place where, as I mentioned in the eye, you could click on that and then see, get some more information on what that means. But if you think about a moat, um, you know, the idea is like keeping your, um, well, the idea is to keep your competitor kind of away from you. Your, so if there's a wide economic moat, then it's better for the company um, versus a narrow means that the competitors, it's more competitive. But again, if you're looking for a more uh, descriptive description, I guess you could um, click on that I and get some more information. Does Morningstar show any analyst target prices for a security? Um, so it's just going to be that that chart that you'll see the pricing. Um, that's really going to be where you'll see all the pricing. Okay, where is the stock's price 50-day moving average? Um, let's see. Joe, I might need some more information on that. If you want to send an email, because I'm not sure what, exactly what you're asking, you could always email library services at morningstar.com. Okay, where do you look again for the chart for a particular security? So I'll just point that out again. And I can show you. All right, so this is going to be where the chart is once you put in the name, you can click here to get that chart. Okay, how would we sign up for a monthly database training session? So you don't actually need to sign up. You can just, um, the day of the training, you can go to the database and then click here to attend. And that's, it's as easy as that. This database website is free or does it require some type of membership? That's a great question. So it is free from the library. The um, library does um, purchase it and provide it to its patrons for no cost, which is awesome. And it just gives a lot of this data people pay for a lot for. We do have an individual investor subscription 
um, and it is a couple hundred dollars a year. So it's a, just a great resource that your library provides for you so that you can get all that content um, for free. And you just need to access it through the library's uh, data or website, excuse me. So Barb, maybe you can chime in, but you yeah. probably just log in with your library card or. That's right. You can, you can obviously use it in the building, but if you want to use it from home, you just need to log in with your library. Usually people have created a username and password. If you don't have one, you can just go to ahml.info, create a username and password. And then if you go to the research tab on the database, then you'll see all the databases that are available and you'll just look for Morningstar. They're listed alphabetically. So, and you can right. get to it that way. And right, use it yeah. Home. Yeah, and if you ever have questions, I'm sure the library can assist with that as well, but it should be pretty okay. straightforward. Yes, you can call us, you can come to the desk. Yeah. Great. Um, okay, and then, someone asked, can you save searches? That's actually a good question. I forgot to cover that. So because the database is shared by the library, there is um, no way to save anything. So for example, when you put in your portfolio, you don't need to worry about it saving, um, which is good from a security standpoint, but then also just keep that in mind so that if you do log in again, you would have to create it again if you were looking at the same. It's the same with the searches as well. Um, although I log in and you can see that my my list is kind of uh, already there. So I'm not sure if that would also happen, but nothing should be saved within the database. So you do have to go in and, and create new things every time, new searches. Great. I think that's all the questions. Um, the one I just didn't know was by Joe. He direct messaged me and Joe, maybe you could um, send an email because I need to look into that more. I'm not quite sure what you mean. And so I just want to make sure that we get an answer to your question. Um, so feel free to email library services at morningstar.com. Just a reminder that's at the bottom here if you ever forget and want to reach out. So Great. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm really happy. Oh, great. Somebody said they're Christine Ben's follower. I'm telling you, she has a great following and she's even nicer in person. She's just a great person. So um, we're lucky to have her and she has just great content. So um, thank you guys so much. I'm really glad that you were able to join uh, in this this evening and especially on a nice day, although it is dark outside now. So um, I just really appreciate you guys using the database. And if you ever have any questions or need anything, you can reach out. We are a small team. It's myself and one other person. So I'm likely going to be the one who answers your question and I'll be happy to. So um, don't hesitate to reach out if we can be of any help. But thanks again. And thank you, Barb. Thank you so much for a great presentation, for being with us tonight. And uh, just to reiterate, you can reach out to Morningstar directly, or you can always check with the library, give us a call. You can chat us. Now you can text us. So uh, however you want to try to get a hold of us, we're there. Wonderful. So thanks, everybody, for coming tonight. And have a good rest of the evening.